once and you're gonna fail and you're like, oh, I have a crappy idea, I trust you're not gonna do it. And really, you just have to, in a sense, like get it right once, make it work out. Right? You can fail as many times as you want, right? Lots of push and push, move stuff around, erase stuff, get frustrated, but at the end, right, you want to make sure that you have a user experience that works. Right? So you have a user so you have this idea of user experience. Right? You've done all these posts to post, and you have an idea of what the customer experience is going to be. Right, so then you actually have to figure out what's the product that wants to do. Right, so we all hear about the MVP. Right, um, you know some people say the MEP, VP. Right, so you know, what's the business portion? Right? How are you going to sell it? Right, so let's use those interchangeably for now. Right, and so the least amount of work. you have to define the B and the D very carefully, right, is what is the objective of this, right, in which, you know, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more, feel free to ask the question if you're going to go right, but I'm going to talk a little bit about that, right, but I think this part's critical, because people really want to jump into, like, finding engineers, hiring them, and building something right away, but really, you really have to take them to the you know, obviously, they're Think about transportation. You start with a skateboard, a scooter. More complexity, but the same concept. A motorcycle and then a vehicle. Right? There's that uh, Steve Jobs quote a while back. And if you ask, I think like 20 years ago, like what people wanted, right? They were you know, riding horses to get around with carriages. Like, I just want a faster horse. Right? Or maybe more horses. But how did how would you have ever come up with the concept of a car? Right? I mean back then nothing like that, right? So the idea of imagining what a customer thinks that they tell you that they want, but what's their core need and how to translate it, right? And that's where the MVP comes in really, really handy to help get to that point, right? And so we're gonna talk about a few examples. Um, raise your hand if you're married. Good, 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 okay. So what would be a really good MVP for a wedding cake? Example, idea. So the way you know you do it is you figure out you you know you go to the wedding cake place and you test out what they have. You know, what do you have? What kind of dough do you have? What is it actually tasty? You're spending a lot of money on that wedding cake, yeah. especially in the US. You spend a lot of money on that wedding cake, and you want to make sure at least it tastes good. It's a, it's a dessert, right? And so I think the cupcake is a beautiful example. Uh, there's lots of other examples I've seen with food. I think a lot, a lot of food places you know, can do really interesting. I think this is a really good example because I think you know a lot of people get married have to go through this process. It's very
very apical about quantifying the tendency of it. And so here's some of the examples that I'm going to talk to you about. Again, frameworks, right? I said there's a lot of frameworks used previously. And this is one set of examples in the framework tree world. Okay? Um, by no means is this complete. So this is a good start. And I really want to focus on it and get to the heart of what an MVP is. Okay? Uh, the Wizard of Oz. Everything appears to be real to customer, and on the back end, people smile. Can you think of any examples? Right, uh, right here. Create a single web page that has a sign-up form, a converted form, 
and it explains your product and you ask people to sign up if they're interested in learning about it. Exactly. Right? So you just have a page. In the internet world, right? You know, that has something that we're doing. So if people somehow find it, they're clearly interested in what you have. Right? You know, if you have like sign up for an email, then not only are they interested to come to the website, they're actually like asking you to send me spam. Right? Now even better, maybe you have like a pre-order or a wait list. Right? I mean it's even more interest, right? But one of my favorite examples is from mint.com. Right? So ultimately they realize, okay, we need we need mint.com, we need to come check out our website, we need a service. But they're they're asking for a service. Again, this is in 07, right? To put all your credit card and bank information on their site. Like, yeah. I think it's pretty, I mean, even then, they're like arguing about it, right? Now, what what happened in that site? That's really important. Shock the whole world. The recession, the financial crisis, right? So, a lot of people in the world were poor, right? So, what did Mint do? Mint had a blog, right, about how to save money, about finances, about what's going on in the economy, right? So, they had this blog, and they give tips. I could save you some money. You know, sign up for these deals. Hey, there's this credit card deal that gives you 5% back on your first month. Right? Hey, you know, for Christmas shopping, check out these sites and they'll give you deals on Christmas shopping. So they didn't have a product, right? They had a landing page, but the number of people that signed up for their blog, right, was ridiculous. Right? And so now they have this blog and like how to teach you how to save money. Right? Got a ton of SEO, right? And they're like, hey. I can save you more money for working on this product. I can analyze your finances and figure out how to save you money. Right? So they took an interest. You know, um, Bill talked about triggers. Now, what are some interesting triggers for customers? Right? Financial crisis, you don't have much money, we're saving you money, talk about a trigger, right? Something that fits really well. And so they had all these people interested in the blog. They're like, hey, sign up if you're interested. They gave them the information, right? And they asked people to go to extra steps. And again, a lot of people looked at it. Some were freaked out. <coughs> Some were like, hey, give me more information. Others were like, hey, sign me up for this beta. Right? And so they had a very prolific beta, right? Because people were willing to go through the ropes to, you know, they were building trust with all the customers, right? They're using this blog to build trust with customers. They only people can save you money. They have a landing page to show the product. So by the time they launched, they already had like probably people on um, their beta wait list that they could say, hey, we launched, right? So that helped them with the scale, right? And then they finally opened up to everybody else, right? Who's already been checking out the website for the blog, right? Love this example, right? Go for relevant, right? You know, find the relevant triggers and make sure it all ties in together. Video. This one is really amazing. Um, you know, so you have a really raise your hand if you've tried to do something with funny on the DIY project, and then went to YouTube and you had to watch a video on how to make it. Fair amount of people. I guess the sad part is whenever I do this, it's some like twelve year old kid. Like, hey, this is how I did it for myself. And I'm like, oh wow, this twelve year old kid really showing up. <laughs> but I think that's really neat. Is where like you know you don't have to just do a DIY. Project. something really, really hard that he hasn't made a video about it, right, that you can demonstrate with a video that can make it really easy. Right? And, uh, you know, a picture of a thousand words, video, a thousand pictures, right? You know, like, you can use a video to explain your product so rich and in detail, especially if it's complex. If you have a complex market. I mean, how do you explain, you know, cloud drive saving, you know, thing on, like, a landing page, like, really simple, right? You know, this magic of, like, Weather service, right? Exactly. <laughs> Cloud technology, right? I mean, Dropbox launches what? Oh, seven. Seven. Oh, eight, oh, nine. Around that time. Right? So, you know, it wasn't as prevalent. Again, Google Drive wasn't out by then. Right? We had no Google Drive. Right? And so, this is still pretty early in its days. And I love what they did. Right? Now, hard to manage your file in the cloud system. 
people who work across multiple bodies need to access these files. Right? Everyone needs, I mean, how many people are everyone carrying around flash drives? I mean, they got keychains for your flash drive for your phone book. Some of you might have keychain flash drives right now. Right? But I think the amount of people who haven't used a flash drive in like the past year, probably is pretty big because of Dropbox. Right? I mean, raise your hand if you have not used a flash drive in the past six months. Okay, not as much as about half. I mean, that's really going to be gone. Like, the whole idea of a flash drive is going to be gone, right? And so, you know, he's like, will people, you know, he explained it really well. Like, will people do this? Right? This is just him by himself. He just put together a video. Put it on Reddit. The importance of that is he found a customer base that kind of understood what he was doing. Right? He went for a technology focused customer base first. Because if the most tech focused people won't do it, how do you get the less tech focused people to do it? Right, so he targeted really, really well, right? Did this video. And then raise your hand if you've seen this video. Not many people. So in the video, he had a whole bunch of Easter eggs, like super dorky Easter eggs about like Linux and penguins and all this stuff. But only people, right, of that demographic would have under that cohort would understand what he built for. Right? So he kind of made some fun for this one, right? Targeted the specific audience, right? Had relevant, fun information, target them. So in the Reddit thread, they're like talking about, hey, did you see that Easter egg? Oh no, I have to look at the video again. Let me see if it finds an Easter egg. Right? How many times have you watched a movie because of an Easter egg? Like right? trying to find a specific part, right? Marvel does this all the time with the Batman movie. So he did the exact same thing. So not only did he target the people he wanted, he gave them reason to rewatch the and then from there, I mean, it's all history. You know, he went to YC, right? You know, I think second most valuable company to come out of all time here after Airbnb. Right? And it all started with targeting the right group of people. And he knew he couldn't explain it with words or pictures, so he did it with a video. Right? Kickstarter. Now, before I dive into Kickstarter, what are the cautions? Right? There's a lot of misconceptions about how you can use Kickstarter. People just think, oh yeah, I'll just slap something on there, and you know, people will pay to like, you know, do my development cost for me, right? Like Kickstarter is like very much a contract with your future customer, right? Like when you're doing Kickstarter, you know, you are promising these people that you're giving them a product, and I'm assuming that everyone here knows Kickstarter. If if you don't, shout out. Okay. Um, so there's. Uh, They're like, hey, you know, if you like give us fifteen dollars, we'll like give you a t-shirt. Right? But the next level for the actual product is like a hundred dollars, a hundred and fifty dollars, right? So no one could commit to that because they all got t-shirts, they had this really interesting thing, right? So then they got like thousands of t-shirts. So here's a company focused on building this like very technological product, but that they have to ship out thousands of t-shirts. <laughs> We're pretty much a t-shirt company, right? It's like so <laughs> ridiculous, right? You have to figure out what your goals are for your Kickstarter. Or else you're gonna get stuck in this weird loop, right? You know, if you have, you know, a whole bunch of, um, you know, if you're doing manufacturing, right, then you have to make sure that you're ready for it, right? You probably need to have proven it out beforehand, like proven that you're manufacturing, right? Because what you're doing with Kickstarter is maybe you're trying to figure out your market now, right? You have to figure out maybe you're scaling, right? See, so like if you got way more orders, can you scale, right? But what's more important? Getting like 500 orders on Kickstarter, or getting 500 pre-orders on your own website. Uh, and, so, and, and why? Why? Explain. I, I don't know. I feel like that if they're on your own website, like you already have through that whole drive through traffic towards your website. Like mm -hmm. Right. So I mean, they're driving traffic towards you coming on your website. Also, the type of users on Kickstarter are a little bit different. It's kind of like cutting edge people. And there's this social component of Kickstarter. Like, hey, your friend right, did this Kickstarter, you should support it too. Right? Or like, hey, I support this Kickstarter. You put it on Facebook. You're like, hey, I'm so cutting edge. I support this Kickstarter. Right? And other people, oh, no, no, no. I have FOMO. I'm going to join this Kickstarter too. Right? I mean, there's lots of these things with Kickstarter you have to think about. And so 
in the mind, because all these people always get envisioned. What are your next steps? What are you trying to learn? Right? So, love the, love the flow of time. Right? The reason why you're so inefficient is because you're spending so much time with your energy. Right? So, and, and so, you know, th this is where it is. If you could test, if you could test them, right? You could do A and B. bunch of metrics, right? But you have to dig a whole bunch of data, right? And then you have to dig through and find what the metrics are. And I think this is really important because I think a lot of people confuse the two. Oh yeah, we're going to collect all this data, which is cool. And that's, that's great, right? You know, now the storage costs are so low. Like, you can go and collect tons and tons of data. Right? But you got to take that a step further and figure out what metrics are actually useful to you. Right? And so from there, it's not just metrics, so what's the difference between a metric and a key performance indicator? A uh, key performance indicator is like a metric that you measure to uh, prove out like some progress towards in your business versus a metric is just something you track to like campaign performance essentially. Right, and so again, you're going to have all this data, right, a ton of crap, really, right, which is, which is okay, it's, you know, storage is cheap, so you can actually collect a ton of crap. And then you wade through it to find, you know, what's your rare metal, right? What's your metric that means to you? Then of your metrics, then you want to figure out, like, what's actually important, right? And you pull that out, and it helps you figure out your progress, right? Now, I always tell kind of like engineer, like, product managers I work with, like, when you think about metrics and KPIs, think about what things are going to track daily, right? And those should be specific things, you know, like, you know, like, every day you go in, like, oh, nothing broke, things are okay, right? When you think weekly, Think about you know, what are the trends, right? How's my business doing? Right? Is it going okay? Am I making money? Or you know, what are things that's happening? And then maybe you're thinking about monthly and quarterly separately. Bigger picture. Where's the business moving? Is it moving towards my goal? What what you know, here's my end vision. How am I moving towards that? Right? Because you know, for people to spend too much time on data is really quite like a big trash. So I always tell people to think about, you know, the short term and the long term. So um, the, the reason why I, I want to bring this up here is even though we're not going to be doing a lot of maybe iteration right, during this week of our product development, but again, another framework from the startup world right, is about using all this data and measuring it, learning as much as possible, and trying to build things. Right? And so again, all your PMRs, all your customer you know, all information that you're doing, you have all these hypotheses. Right? As you start trying to build something, right, maybe you go, This doesn't seem right. You learn something new and you switch out something different. You keep iterating, right? And so where can you apply this framework based on the learning goals that you have? Okay? So I think, you know, really think about kind of metrics and data. So a couple fun examples that you want to do. So, um, okay. so you have a sign-up process here. So this is a current one, okay? So someone's like, you know, we should put a sign in using Facebook. I think that's going to be a lot of people are doing this, right? Facebook is a billion users of this company. Someone's like, nah, nah, you know, oh, we should use Google. Right? We should use Google Right? They're like, oh, you know, which one to use? I don't know. Right? So we didn't use Google. Raise your hand if you think Google is better than Facebook. It's a sign of Google. It's an invention. Very, very few. Okay? Facebook? Raise your hand if you think there's no change. Okay, a few. Yes. Where's the room? Thinking, right? Any thoughts? Right, depending on the demographic you're targeting. Depending on the demographic you're targeting. <coughs> Over 40, more likely Facebook. More likely Facebook. So here, let me tell you the demographic, right? 
It's like um, late twenties women to mid forties women. Okay, so that's the demographic. Right? So I'm gonna try this one more time. Right? I'm really curious what people think. Right? So please decide on this one, this one, or no change. Okay, so Facebook. So which one thinks this one, uh, which one thinks this one? Right? A few people? Oh no, I'm just, yeah, so I'm asking, date of birth, who do you think this one was? Okay, okay. And who do you think this one was? Most of the people. No change? Any changes? Okay, most people participated. So, so this one won in terms of more people doing it, which makes sense as less steps, okay? But the company went with this. Why? Right, right here.
get more calls like this. Okay, one of my favorite examples. Okay. So which one? This is from Etsy. I learned this one with Etsy. Okay. So the difference here is the same detail state. But this one has a little row on top that says similar items. Okay. Only difference between the two. Which one do you think performs better? The one on the left. Raise your hand. What was the conversion goal? What were they trying to drive people to do? Purchase. Right. Purchase. Right. So overall purchase. Right. Site purchase. Right. Oh, sorry. So okay. clarify the question. Sorry. By site purchase, you mean purchase anything on the site? Purchase or? anything on the site. Uh, <coughs> anything on the site. Okay. The raise your hand is this one. Small. Right. Now, you have to pick A or B. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want to clarify. So, raise your hand if you think it's B, this one. Most of you, okay. I'm gonna pick on, uh, there's like I think four people from Peru. I'm gonna pick someone from Peru because it's one of my favorite countries in the world. So who's from Peru and who'd like to answer the question? Okay, excellent. So, oh, which one did you vote for? Uh, right. The right, okay. And, why do you think this one was better converted? Uh, and in my case, what I like is, for example, that I see the link with Facebook. Uh, oh, this one? Yeah. Oh, actually, that one is right there as well. So it's literally the only change is this top, top area. That's the only change. Ah. Yeah. No? Yeah, you want to take a shot? Yeah. 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 You're from Peru? Yeah. Okay, okay, sure. Because I can see more choices there. Yeah. So I can mix it with the flow. Okay, so you're saying there's more choices. In the second one. In the second one. Yes. So you think even though they don't buy this one, they can purchase one the other one. Yes. Right? Really, really good. Okay, we have an idea over there. If you're coming from Google, right, this converted like 40% of your users. Now, why is that the same? Anyway, simpler? Anything else? Oh, oh sorry. Oh, okay. So the one with tons of items on top, right, got a 40% higher than the one with single, or if you're coming from Google. But if you're a current user on the site, one without the extra items is going to sign. So okay, right there in the back. Uh, it's that one on the right is is same it's the same patterns of Google and the one on the left, the people that are common to the site, there are less options, so they tend to just go for that the small options. Okay, uh, we go uh, teal pastel blue shirt. Um, so on the left Do you know how to browse? Do you know how to search? 
church, right? I'm looking for this, right? Don't show me anything else, right? This is like distracting, really, right? Actually, it deters it because Etsy users like to like see something like, ooh, what's that? And kind of click it out. So like they were going to buy it, but you distracted them to not buy it, right? Whereas in this one, you're like, what's Etsy? So they have this one thing that I click on. In, in, in this case, they're like, oh, I don't really like that. Okay, I don't really like that. But here, you come here, you're like, oh, that's eh, okay. But whoa, it's all this other cool stuff. Let me kind of search around. And it's at the very top, kind of in your face. Right? And we tested this so many different ways. Right? The basically the core thesis is if you're a new user group and never used Etsy, we're going to show you as much stuff as possible to give you the breadth of what Etsy is. If you're a current user, we're going to actually try to focus your attention on it. So, where the task comes from, who your user is and their behavior can be drastic difference in their behavior based on what you're showing. So, you know, A-B testing. I'm using A-B testing as a Dilbert comic, for those that know Dilbert. I'm using A-B testing to manipulate a rational human. Bend to my will and choose the orange button minus click cards. Uh, is this legal? I own you now. Right? So, A-B testing is great. You know, that comic, what do you do, A or B? Right? Or you think about a lot. And you can just A-B test it. So the one drawback of A-B test, it's a really great thing. If you're to A-B test to infinity, right? To optimize to infinity. Right? You know what you get? You get a performance. Basically, if you just keep A-B testing, you're going to get something that's like, you know, pretty much similar to one, right? So you really have to be careful what direction you want to go. You can A-B test forever and kind of get to a thin margin, and eventually you're going to have to take risks. And you're going to have to see, you know, like, what, how can I move it, you know, not just 3 or 5 percent, but 30 percent, right? You know, how do I move the needle? Right? So that's kind of A-B testing. The limitation. Yeah, I gave you a couple examples of why it's great, but there's you know, there are areas in which you get diminishing. Right? So I really want to think about kind of one-way direction versus two ways. Right? If you know, if you go on a one-way street, it's really hard to go back that direction. Right? So sometimes you're going to make decisions in your product in which you can't turn back. Right? That's what we call one-way direction. Right? It's a one-way direction. In those cases, you have to think really clearly <coughs> what you do and be has conviction, or else you can't move back the other direction. Right? Whereas if, if you know that it's a two-way street, like a landing page, like where are you going to put a button? What color the button? And things like that. You know, you could change you know, on a daily basis. Right? And those, you shouldn't even argue. You should just test to figure out what's going on. Right? So when you think about products, right, and in your entrepreneurship careers, right, if it's a one-way road, really clear. If it's two ways, I don't argue. I just test. Right? And so here, let me sum up. Again, close to your time. I think it's been eight minutes of lecture now. Right? It's great to do this morning, so we want to make sure you do great. But product manager, right? You live right in the middle of design at the business. Right? This is my day-to-day -day job. Right? As a startup founder, right, you do this and more. Right? It's a really big component because your company Beginning, right? The company is right? And you don't just look for you know, a problem that you have a solution to, right? PMR, really important. You can be touch points. Knowing the needs, right? So that you can then figure out what to test. Right? Figure out what customer is, right? Figure out how to test it. What's the MVP, right? What's that B of the MVP, right? How can you learn something as quick as possible, right? So that you can you can fail as fast as possible, so you can get to that solution that is eventually what you're right? And so, class, you know, we're here. We, we, you have to be pragmatic, right? We have to, you know, especially this week, we don't have that much time. Right? So think about you know, how you're going to execute, right? How are you going to execute? How are you going to learn, execute, right? And you know, continue learning well after.
So you're talking about the, the moments feature that yeah. recently talking. Okay. Uh, what would I, well, well what sort of product manager in such a case where mm -hmm. your competitor is going to take the copy to this much bigger than you? Tough question since, you know, I'm not part of that space. But again, you know, similar to the question before, right? It's what's your pre work for them? Right? Sure, they copy, right? My guess, you know, my guess, is they're actually quite, like, you can't, Anyone who knows development is really hard to develop a well, you know, scoped out feature. And both of them are actually pretty good, right? But I mean, I think the key here is like, what's your pre work, right? What research you do? What what are your goals? And you know, that one feature is not going to break your biggest path, right? And so you still have I mean, the core uses of the whole are specific. So you just got to execute this. Right? I mean, it's really about like it's fine you copy, but you know what's you know are you copying the next time up? I'm ahead. Of that's kind of like what I was talking about. Like, hey, that's cool. They copied the validated idea, but I got so much stuff in this backlog, like they can't keep up with me. Uh, there's a question over here. Uh, Including the Kickstarter and the Facebook's frameworks for the MVP. I see that you're using the MVP to go on the Kickstarter. And again, it depends on the B question, right? Like, what are you trying to validate? You know, there's, there's an MVP, but you can have multiple. So it depends on every step of the day, like what is your MVP, right? And so what are you trying to learn in each step of the day, right? Just because you have one MVP doesn't mean your next version is perfect, right? The idea is there's MVP in a long way, right? And it gets to a point where your B is so good, it's pretty much your natural about it, then you might still continue to be good, right? You know, and every product you release, there's still good. So I think, yeah, Kickstarter, I think, generally, I would suggest a little bit more launching a new product or launching a new site, like, you don't actually know what results you're going to get, right? And so instead of saying, like, oh, you know, I have no milestones, right? You know, you kind of, you know, you take your dart and your dartboard, and you kind of throw it, like, ah, oh, let's start there, right? And then maybe in your first week, you just completely overshot it. Like, okay, we're going to readjust our goal really quick, right, and check it. Or maybe you were way too optimistic, and it's, like, ten times the over, right? And you readjust. Then you could compare, right? you know, they say the people who are 
change at all if it's not just like a website, right? And so whether it be a physical product or a restaurant, right, or a cake, I think the framework still applies. Right? That'd be my argument, right? But some of the steps might be short term. If you're in a physical product, that like, you know, the early days where you have to do like maybe a phone prototype, right, and then you work on the prototype, you're you printing it. Like a prototyping section might be longer. If you're doing a web project, right, you might, you know, go straight to maybe code printing, right, really easy and manual. Right? If you're doing services, you have to figure out kind of what's your MVP, how are you going to be working, right? What's your target audience, right? And, and how are you know how are you going to uh, figure out if the product is going to actually work? So I think generally.